So looking at cannabis physiology. Now, a lot of times people think physiology, think, oh, it's the physical parts of the plant. That's not the case. This is having to do with kind of how the plant works or the interior components of the plant. You can see here, just plant physiology in general takes into account a lot of different factors. Plant morphology is actually how the plant looks in the basic structures. Physiology takes that into consideration along with cellular interactions, milk and cellular biology, and a bunch of other things. So specifically, physiology is the study of, of the functions of, an or, of organisms. It kind of tries to explain a little bit how they work. Some key physiological processes in plants that I'm going to talk about are tropisms and nastic movements, hormones, photoperiodisms, pigments, transpiration, plant diseases, and also the very important photosynthetic process. So first off, uh, tropisms. Growth in response to a stimulus. It's an example of a plant bending towards the light source. It would be a phototropism. And roots growing down, that's a gravitropism. Plants responding to gravity. Nastic movements are kind of showed here in this gif. Uh, it's plants moving in response to environmental stimulus. Um, the direction of the movement may or may not be correlated with the stimulus. You can see this is a sensitive plant. Um, mimosa, see someone poke the end here. We can see kind of all of the resulting effects here of the plants folding. Plants do this, or this plant particularly does this, to try to reduce impact from herbivores. Uh, also, we have seen a Venus flytrap that you know, will, will close, uh, and that's kind of the same example of a nastic movement. Plant hormones are chemical substances that regulate plant cell processes. They can produce a significant uh, response despite extremely low concentrations. Some key ones uh, to be familiar with are cystic acid, auxin, cytokinins, ethylene, and gibberellins. We're going to go into these uh, in detail in other lectures, but this just gives you an idea, or at least familiarize yourself with some of these common plant hormones. Photoperiodism is response to a change in day length, though accurate, more accurately described to be stated as response to the change in continual length of night, time of uninterrupted darkness over a 24-hour cycle. We have heard of some plants called short days or long day conditions um, in the summer or the winter, and kind of based on the tilt of the earth and how that affects things. Photoperiodism is very important for cannabis because it can signal to either produce more leaves, put it into a vegetative state, or produce flowers, which we call you know the flowering period. So you can some cannabis plants, depending on the hours you give them, will change the various habits or morphology that they take on. Pigments are important, such as chlorophyll would be one. The main purpose of pigments is to aid in the photosynthetic process by increasing the total amount of light that can be captured. Chlorophyll is the most predominant pigment, which gives leaves their green color. We see that evident right here. Other pigments are called anthocyanins. They're purple pigments. They're classified as flavonoids, and they impact uh, wavelength of light that's absorbed. Uh, the purple kush, the purple haze, purple skunk, uh, all these are have increased amounts of anthocyanin or increased amount of purple coloration. You kind of see that purple coming through here, this maturing uh, flower bud. And different ones will have um, different colorations, but some of those colorations are related to the pigments, in this case, anthocyanin. Transpiration is a very important plant process. Uh, it's a process which carries water from the roots of the plant to the shoots and ultimately out the leaves as water vapor. Now this helps the plant move water and nutrients dissolved in the plant. Uh, since plants don't have blood, they're kind of using this water, kind of absorbed in the roots and through the shoots, finding minerals to be dissolved in there, allowing it to cool itself also. Uh, that's its number one task it's used for is the cooling process, even though some is used for photosynthesis. The rate of transpiration, or the rate that water is moved through here, is dependent on a couple of factors. Uh, it's directly related to temperature and sunlight intensity. So you can see as temperature increases to a certain point, but as temperature increases, so does transpiration. Think of it cooling itself and wind velocity. Uh, here, we, as we increase the wind, uh, we're increasing the amount of water that is being evaporated out. It's indirectly proportional to the humidity levels. So you can see as our humidity increases, our transpiration rate will decrease. This is simply because if there's more moisture in the air, there's no place for that water vapor in the, in the leaf to go anywhere. Think about it if you're ever in the summertime, it's really humid and kind of stick to like the car seat or something. Uh, it just feels like clothes stick to you more. That's because there's a very high rate of humidity, very high rate, not allowing water to evaporate well into that external environment. There's also plant disease, which is a very broad topic. 
but in general it's an infection that can alter the physiology of the plant. Even though plants do not have white blood cells like we do, like in our immune systems, they still have defense mechanisms present. And here we see a cannabis plant with powdery mildew on it. Photosynthesis is the last step here. That's a complex process. It uses light, water, and carbon dioxide to process or produce sugar molecules and oxygen as a byproduct. Understanding this process can help improve the quality, quantity and quality of cannabis that is harvested. So while it's presented as very you know, quick and easy here, understanding this, especially with artificial lighting, can really change the quality of cannabis that will be produced by a grower.